when Pius XII so much wants to do this because it is the common tradition of all Catholics to elevate this dogma of faith to the universal church. Augusta est, that Augusta, that Empress of Heaven, now enter where she belonged. And why Mary was taken up to heaven? Because, as we say in the opening prayer, the Virgin Mary sinless. If she has no sin, she does not need to be subject to the decay. And because she was the mother of God, from which blood and flesh was taken, cannot be that she would be buried in the dirt. And so, the Immaculate, Con the immaculate Conception find its fulfillment in the Asunta. And that's why God takes Mary body and soul to the eternal heaven. But I like to focus on that second reading of St. Paul. St. Paul made it clear to us that Christ died and rose. And so he was the first one who rose from the dead. And after him, those who belong to him. And who belongs to him? Those who do the will of the Eternal Father. Those who hear and believe his message. Those who follow his footsteps. Those who take the cross and endure it. And who is more best from all people but the Blessed Virgin Mary? From the very moment of inconception, she has to face the reality that Joseph who was her husband to be. And God took care of them. She has to run and go to Bethlehem to give birth to a child in a state. Imagine what that heart of a woman felt. Few weeks after the baby was born, they have to run and go back to Egypt because Herod wants to kill him. Jesus now rise and pick up 12 years of age, and he was lost as they went to Jerusalem. As soon as Jesus become now mature, he now begin his public ministry. She see him being debated, rejected, and finally she see him on the way to Calvary and hanged for three hours on that cross and brought in her arm lifeless before they closed the door in her face. Imagine, you tell the cross was not was not powerful. And what's very heavy on the, on, the, on the shoulders of the Virgin Mary. God, did God love the Virgin Mary? Hail full of grace. You are full of grace. You are the most powerful woman that God ever created. In fact, we call her the dispenser of all graces. And she has to bear the cross that God has given her. And that's why St. Paul said, And he who is Christ, he has to destroy all powers. He has to destroy everything. In fact, even death itself. Because he has to reign forever and ever. My dear people, the feast of the uh, Assumption is not only the feast of Mary, but the feast and the hope of each one of us. Because she is the mother of the church. She is the mother of holiness. She teaches us how to live and please Jesus. She knows her place and she knows that her maternity that she has for us is so deep in our heart that she prepared herself to be our mother even prior to the death of Christ on the cross before he gave, it, gave her to us. And she said to the people of Cana, to those who are attending the, get the, the wedding feast, to those who are preparing, do what my son said. And if we do what Jesus wants us to do, great things will happen. This is what Mary is all about. Mary is the pattern of each one of us. Where she, where she went, we hope one day to follow. She is the model of the church. That's why we call the call to holiness. That each one of us in, her, in his or his life, all of us has a vocation. You are a married person. You are a single person, you are a widow, you are a child. All of us, including religious and priests, all of us has a place. And we need to sanctify ourselves. 
and sanctify by doing one thing. Without being afraid of the truth, not only we live the truth, but even for the truth we have to suffer. And because of this, we prepare our way to that place where Mary is now reigning. Yes, Mary is the one that by which we who are ordinary Christians, we all one day will be with God. Let us pray today on this feast of this great dogma of faith. That what God intends for the Virgin Mary, that she one day will be with heaven, that we too, although we are not rescued from the power of original sin, we one day will be called to be with her in heaven. May she, as a student into heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, in pleading for the church. And whenever the church is in trouble, whenever we are down, she intends to open the arms of her son with those five wounds and show them to the Eternal Father that he has suffered and by his blood he has redeemed and washed his church, his bride. You see what powerful she is? And that's why on the Feast of Our Lady, we pray intensively, especially that she who really passed on from this life to eternity, she will help us, as we say in that beautiful Hail Mary, that she pray for us now, because we need prayers, that she will pray at the end of our day. So one, one day, we too close our eyes to this world of pain and suffering, and open our eyes an eternal bliss. As St. Paul put it so well, no eye ever saw, no ear ever heard, and never entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. God.